I'm Louis K.O. King and I like to view cagematers.com. UK.com, sorry. Dot com UK. UK.com. <laughs>
tell you just to, don't matter what his name is. You just I wouldn't give I wouldn't give him monkeys. And in them days, I spoke to my family, my yeah, children. Yeah. I had to put food on the table, and I was satisfied just to put food on the table. Yeah, yeah. These days, bare knuckle fighters, they they can retire after 40, 50 pipes maybe. Yeah. Less than that. Yeah. They can retire, 40 fights say. Yeah. I mean, the money you're getting these days, you know, what, big time. themselves, sort Sorry? of. Sorry? Like, so they're getting paid a lot of money to fight. A lot of hell Underground, yeah. Sort of course, they get, you're getting big, big bucks. Uh, but uh, in my day, you know, you were fighting. I was fighting, literally fighting for to put food in the day with my family. Yeah. Well, that's, uh... Sorry, you're sorry. Um, so if we go back, when you was... What was it? You was about 18, 19 when you first... Started off when I was 16. Was you doing boxing, normal boxing? But no, uh, you didn't have fighting. Yeah. You know, what, what do you mean normal box? Well, just training box, because, like, bare well, I was in there fighting bare, like, what? Yeah. I was fight, fighting men yeah. at the age of 16. I was yeah. about my age. Right. I told Tommy I was 18. Yeah. Tommy didn't know my age until I was about 22 or 23. Right. I was fighting uh, grown men at 18. Uh, sorry, at 16. Yeah. Um, by the age of 18, I was fighting internationals right. from all over the world. Did you go, did you travel the world? I travelled, I travelled, yeah. yeah, I fought them in their own yeah. backyard and they came and put me in the barn up in uh, Hendon. Right, and I've got to, I hope you don't mind me saying, you was a very hum, handsome man when you was younger. Was you, what do you uh, mean when? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that. You still are. <laughs> <laughs> um, was you, you know, you, you, was you such a good fight because you was worried about getting your, you know, your fight? <laughs> didn't, you didn't, didn't worry. Really good looks, no, no it didn't worry. Didn't worry me at all. My style of fighting was coming with a crash. Yeah. And therefore, it was hard for me to cut me in the pace. Yeah. Although if you look closely, you see the scars. Yeah. Both eyes, 114 fights, What the hell do you expect? Yeah. I'm bound to have a few scars. But uh, my style was coming in with a crash. And now my, my hands will be able to look through my hands. Pop, fist. It's harder. To, it's easier to punch up. What is to punch down? Yeah. Uh, I was a middleweight, middleweight champion in the world. And uh, as a middleweight, weight, you, you get guys that are six foot, six foot three. Yeah. Now me, I'm about what five eight, five nine, I don't know, something like that. And. You see these middleweights, these big tall middleweights, six foot three, yeah. six foot. I love them. I love, I love so. The only thing I have was, was I have the reach advantage. But I get, my style was to get under that reach. Yeah. And when you're punching up, you get more power, Put much more power. From, you get more power. Yeah. It comes from the feet. Yeah. Your power comes from your feet. Yeah. You're punching up, you're punching up at the midriff. Yeah. yeah. Punching. When they, these guys were punching down, they were only punching from the shoulder. Yeah. Less power. Yeah, yeah. So and the only place it could hit me was there. Because yeah. I was. Hardest you know, part of the head is. Hardest part of the body. I used to, I used to bust more knuckles than anything. Who was the toughest fight that you remember? Yeah, uh, toughest. I'll tell you what, one hell of a fighter. He's from London, Ian Woodley. It was one of the bloodiest battles. Ever seen in London? So, so they, 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 you know, it's still a good thing. One of those bubbles. I cut him to pieces in eight rounds, but he was a hard son of a bitch, yeah. hard man. I'll tell you what. Since then, since that fight, we've, me and him have been best mates. Yeah. We've been like, me and him like that. So like, really, that. It's, it's respect, we've been like brothers. Yeah, yeah, respect. Yeah. Hardest fight. He, he had my hardest British fight. Yeah. Um. I thought Toby Wilson from British top, British Championship. But he wasn't as hard as he. I won that. Hardest fight was championship fights, obviously. Uh, Peter Benici yeah. for the European Championship. He was an Australian Amer uh, sorry, Australian Italian. Benici, that was his second name. And um, then there was Jean Paul Durrell. He was a French Canadian from Quebec. And he was 
strong, yeah. What, what do you expect? Yeah. For, for a world champion. What, what was your What was your Was you doing a lot of running and stamina stuff when you was yeah. in your prime? Yeah, was because yeah. cardio is a big part. Would you say cardio is a big part as yeah, well as taking a punch? Of so that's where the smoking. If someone smokes, you know, never they, smoke, never smoke, never smoke. And Paddy, obviously, I know. Um, we know you for uh, BKB, but a lot of people who don't know too much about BKB will relate you more to my, your good friend Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. um, do you still do you still speak to him? Because I mean, well, you've both been here, you've both obviously been ill, haven't you? Yeah, well, I, I, I can't. Uh, I haven't spoken to him. Mark. Me, me and him, we we used to get, I got on the phone regularly and speak to each other. Yeah. But obviously, you can't you can't talk to Muhammad no. because of the Parkinson's syndrome. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I last saw him I think about three years ago. Yeah. But um. Is he, me, he is one of your really good friends, isn't he? I mean. Good friend, very very close friend. Yeah. Yeah. Because didn't you help him get a license again or something? Yeah. Like I, that? No, I, no, I didn't help him get a license. I, there was a people were people were writing into me from all over all over the world. Yeah. They knew me in Australia. And, and these European countries, yeah. and it was these underground fighters, bare knuckle fighters. They were writing into me uh, letters. In the three and a half years I was out, I ended up with 22,224. Really? Yeah, names and addresses. I took these up to the uh, American Embassy oh. in London. And I spoke to a taxi, I always remember the name, Ronald Deutsch. He's on Tashi Lemma to the ambassador. I walked up, up with these loaded big bag in my arms. I want to see the American ambassador. You can't just walk into a place no, and, no. and see the ambassador straight away. No. But I didn't know. No. I come to see the ambassador. Oh, you can't see. Are you going to put it? Why are you going to make a point? I didn't need a point. I'm paying one. I didn't need one. Oh, you must, you must have a point. And these big bodyguards were looking down at me. I said, what the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> and in the end, I got his attaché. It was uh, this guy called Ronald Deutsch. And uh, he assured me that all of these letters, 22,024 names and addresses, would be put in front of the President of the United States. Yeah. Of a, you know, which was tricky dicky at the time. Yeah, yeah. Richard Nixon. So we're going back to the was it seven Nixon time. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they were put on his his, his desk and he assured me that they, they would be. Yeah. And whether they were or not I do not know, but yeah. uh, it got back to me that they that they were. That's but brilliant. Nixon probably didn't take that notice. No. Time, and then I'm after I'm that sure a lot of other people did, did take notice. Yeah. Because Nixon was one of the ones that didn't want Ali in the ring. Oh. And then after that they obviously fought again, is that right? It, yeah, but it was, yeah, but it was, when you think of it, it was, it's a dirty, dirty game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a po you're talking about politics is a dirty game. Yeah. Um, now Nixon was run by J. Edgar Hoover. Yeah. And what was that, that how, was it millionaire? Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes. He used to handle all. This is what a lot of people don't know. Hughes and uh, Hoover. You know, uh, and Nixon himself, yeah. they didn't want that to fight. No. But uh, public demand. Yeah, so they did it. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, your lovely wife's here tonight. I've just been speaking to her, and she said she used to get very nervous when you went to fight. Obviously. She used to like it, yeah. <laughs> but she, she used to like it when we put the money in the table, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get the food for him. But, uh, and I learned a few bucks, you know, we earned a few, a few quid. But not uh, to the extent of what they get today. No. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't be like retirement money, like they earn now, you know. You, I mean, you get boxers, say David Hay, for example. Yeah, if I was fighting to David Hay, my ass. <laughs> if I was fighting today, if I was fighting today, yeah. I'd, I would be a multi millionaire. Yeah, definitely. I mean, good luck to the, don't get me wrong, good luck to the lads that start this fighting. I yeah. support every one of them, yeah. the bare knuckle fighters. Yeah. I support them all. Yeah. And, um, but you know, in them days, no. you're fighting for peanuts. Well, Paddy, I've seen a couple on YouTube where, you know, a couple of gypsies have maybe fought for £20,000. Mm. And 
not being rude or anything, <coughs> some of the ones I've seen are not uh, are standard that, you know, the fight's no. over in a couple of minutes, you know, someone gets maybe punched yeah. and that's it. It's well, I've seen that. I know what you're talking about. They come in, you know, there's no... We, it, we were taught, we, you have style. Yeah. Like doing it. We're like, you see, you see two boxers in the ring, fighters. Yeah. I mean, with all due respect, I'm in St. Paul, bare knuckle fighting. Yeah. But with all due respect, you see these club fighters, you know, they got, they got, they have got style. Yeah. You're talking about Egyptians and, and, uh, and the lanes, country lanes, man. Yeah. Hard man, very hard man. But, um, no scientific stuff no. involved there. No. I mean, you see in every one of the videos, obviously, obviously as you just pointed out, it's like a cover on they come in and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, and they're blocking a punch, you know. Oh, just with a quick, quick finish. Come in, bang, bang, bang. You see the same sort of thing on the speaker corner every Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did but you it was know? a different, different ball game with the crowd. That's what it is now, yeah. Because um, now, obviously, a lot of MMA fight, all sorts of fighters are getting involved, don't they, with BKB. Um, mm -hmm. Did you ever get to, did you and uh, Ali ever spar together? Did you ever do any training sessions together? I sparred with pros. Yeah. Sparred with pro, pro boxers. Did you find it different to BKB? Or was it no different just with gloves? No. You used to have, I used to hate gloves. Because when I was sparring, you, obviously you can't spar but bare knuckle. Yeah. I sparred, Tommy used to put 16 ounce gloves on me. He'd give the other guy, Eight ounce gloves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they obviously we six sixty ounce gloves. I hated them. Yeah. And I hated any gloves. Give me BKB, lovely, Jan, yeah. so please. But this was one of the uh, he he would make it hard for me sparring, and I wouldn't realize this until afterwards. I said, Tommy, what, why do you keep using a 60 ounce club on me? He said, because he says it'll make it harder for you. He yeah. said, well, you keep knocking these guys out all the time. Yeah. He said, I'll take these 60 ounce gloves away from you, if you want to, and you'll find a difference. I said, what difference? He said, you won't, won't be able to dig so hard and heavy. That's what you did. Yeah. That's what I do. Do you, oh. miss, do you miss the old guys when you used to oh, fight? Oh, I miss it. I miss it. I miss really? it terribly, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you fought, so did you work as well when you was when you was a young man? No. So you used, 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 used to have a job. Used to have a job, you know, in between sometimes. When, yeah. Uh, when, when times were really hard. Like yeah. door work or that sort of thing. Would you do? I'd you? never go and door work. Big Lane McClain got brought this out. He who was one of me to go and uh, do door work. I'm done. Yeah. Like Lenny, you know, was a doorman. Yeah. And uh, this is one thing that. Sandra, she couldn't put up with. No. I went up there a couple of times and I would say, you know, yeah. I had to come back. I never got, I never got no trouble with that or nothing, but no. it's all work now. I didn't, you know, was I he a friend of yours, Lenny, though? Lenny McClain? Lenny, yeah, he's coming with me, yeah. yeah he he was time. a good heavy, he was like a heavyweight, wasn't he? He was quite yeah. a big lad. Yeah. Um, obviously died of cancer, unfortunately, yeah. but he got his film role before he died, didn't he? So, you know, he was all his work that he put in over the years, like yourself, you know, he got a bit of recognition for it. And unfortunately, people become more famous when they've died mm. than when they're alive, don't they? Yeah, now they had their Lenny, that's when he became famous, when he did, did die. Yeah. Um, that's the way it goes. Because, I mean, I spoke to people that knew Lenny in the 60s, you know, mm. and it was like before anyone, you know, even the Crows back in their early days would know everybody. I mean, Ronnie Reddy, they, 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 they used to come to fights. They used to come regular when I was fighting up in, um, in London. Two of them, man, great guys. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll get, get more of a backhander off them. They fight. <laughs> the person I've paid for. So like they you know, Ronnie and Reggie come out. Well done, son. Mind you, they they, they had uh, a good wager on yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So they were, make, they were making a bit as well. Because Reggie was a good boxer. Is that right? I mean, I've never seen him. I don't know. I've never seen him fight. I've never seen him fight at all. All, all, I, all I knew about them was uh, when they came to see me fight. Yeah. You, um, 
obviously there's still many, many Paddy Monaghan fans across the world. I mean, I think they'll all be glad to see you back up on your feet. Um, what's yeah, what's the future now? You just you got to go back to hospital? Or is no, 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 no. I'm finished. I'm finished with hospitals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully now. But uh, I was dead there for. I was actually dead for, for 20 minutes. It's incredible when you come back. And I come back from the dead. Well, then there, and St. Peter said he didn't want me. And I went down to the devil. <laughs> the devil didn't want me. So <laughs> did, you, did, you rec did you get any experiences then when you died? No, Do you remember no it was just a. When, just I was when I was dead for trip back to when, to when went, everybody asked me the same question. Yeah. How did you, you know, any experiences? Did you, um, so are you looking forward to tonight? I mean, obviously we've got a nice venue. Not looking forward to it, sure I am. Seeing some of the younger guys that possibly, I mean, we, we have said that there's a lot of fighters now that they're not quite as they were years ago. Um, Paddy, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Pleasure.